Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to Volume 1 in our series on discovering the cycle of fifths for the alto or baritone saxophone. Everything I refer to in these tutorials will be in the E-flat instrument key, so if I say I'm playing the note C, I'm actually playing the note C for the alto sax or the baritone sax, or for any E-flat transposing instrument. The cycle of fifths is just a way to organise the 12 possible major scales or minor scales that naturally occur in music. If we started on the note A and played what is called a chromatic scale, we'd end up with this sound. Now, if you count those notes, I actually played 13 notes, but only 12 of them are given a unique name. The 13th note was the same note that I started on up an octave. I started on an A, and I finished on an A, but as you can hear, they weren't the same pitch. My final A was what they call one octave higher than my starting A. Now, the notes in that chromatic scale are A, A-sharp, B, C, C-sharp, D, D-sharp, E, F, F-sharp, G, G-sharp, and then the A an octave higher. So there's actually only 12 uniquely named notes in music. And we can start, if we play a major scale, say for example we played a major scale starting on that first note A. Now remember, a major scale is just a tune. It's the simple foundation sound in music that the world has called a major scale. But of itself, there's nothing special about it. It's just a melody. Now, we should be able to play that same melody from any one of the 12 unique starting notes available in music. So if we went up a semitone and started on B flat or A sharp, that same melody of a major scale would now sound like this. If we took it up another semitone, the next note in the chromatic scale, well, that would be the note B and a B major scale would sound like this. So as you can hear, the song remains the same, the melody is the same, just the starting pitch in that case is progressively getting a semitone higher on each occasion. Now the cycle of fifths is just an alternate way of looking at the order in which we present our scales. If you think of an old style analog clock face and think of the numbers from midnight up at the top, 12 and then one back right through to 12, we can use that clock face to simulate the 12 unique tones available in Western music via the chromatic scale. The midnight position on the analog clock in music theory is assigned to the scale of C major, the key of C major, which actually has no sharps or flats in it. Now, I'm a huge believer in the concept of if you can say it, you can play it. So I strongly recommend as we set out on this journey to play all of the 12 possible major scales in the order of the cycle of fifths, that the first thing you do when you're presented with a new scale, if you're not totally familiar with the notes in that scale is to say those notes out aloud. So the notes in a C major scale are simply C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. And then in reverse order, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Now, I'm going to assume you know how to play those notes on the saxophone. If not, refer to my earlier tutorials, how to play the low notes, how to play the high notes, and I take you through every single fingering there. I'm not going to duplicate that in this tutorial. What I am going to do is recommend that you use a metronome, and your target speed for these scales will be 70 beats per minute, with each note played as a half-beat note, or a quaver. 
So here's a metronome at 70 beats a minute. One and two and three and four and. That's the target speed that I want you to try and play the scales at. Now when you play your major scales, don't duplicate the top note. Just in this case go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Now once you can comfortably say those notes at a reasonable speed, sometimes it's harder to speak notes than it is to play them. You can certainly play a scale much quicker than you can say it. But once you can say those notes in order, going ascending, going up, and descending, coming down without any stutters and stammers or stops or pauses, it's then time to try and play it on your instrument. So if I put my metronome on, we'll tongue every note. One, two, three, four. <laughs> The cycle of fifths says, just like the name indicates, that each new scale, instead of being chromatically up or down, is actually the fifth note, the starting note of each new scale, is the fifth note of the preceding scale. So we started at the midnight position on the analog clock. We're now looking for the one o'clock position. That's our first scale that has sharps in it. It's the G major scale, because if we think of the first five notes we played in the C scale, C, D, E, F, G, well the fifth note we played was G, C, D, E, F, G, so this G major scale will be starting on low G, and it has a sharp in it. Any of the scales that have sharps in it, the last note in the scale, the seventh note in the scale before the octave, will be a semitone below that note. So whilst the chromatic scale has 12 unique notes, if you think of what we just played in the C scale, there are only seven uniquely named notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The C with the high octave key on was a duplication of the first note up an octave. So a G major scale will be the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp and G. And again, if we put our metronome on, okay, one, two, three, four. That's at 70 beats a minute, each note being a quaver. Once you're in control of the G scale, the two o'clock position on the analog clock face will now be the major scale that starts on the fifth note of a G scale. So can you work out what that scale will be? What was the fifth note in the G scale that you just played? It would have been that note. G, A, B, C, D. D's the fifth note. So that becomes your next scale, the D major scale. Now D major has two sharps in it. It retains the first sharp from the G scale, which was F sharp. But remember, the next sharp has to be a semitone below the last note that you're going to play, the octave high D. So if you think of your chromatic scale, and you have to call that note a sharp, that would be a C sharp. So D major has two sharps in it, F sharp and C sharp. So if we put our metronome on, 70 beats a minute, let's play the D major scale, and we'll start with D with the octave key. And we'll go right up to the high D. Two, three, four. So what was the fifth note in the D scale that you just played? D, E, F sharp, G, A. So the major scale that starts now in the three o'clock position 
will actually be an A major scale. It retains the two sharps from the prior scales, F sharp and C sharp, but adds in a new sharp, which has to be a semitone below an A, because that's the last note in the scale. And you have to call that note a sharp, and if you think of your chromatic scale, that note will be G sharp. So A major has three sharps in it, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. If we put our metronome on and play that scale, it'll be one, two, three, and in subsequent volumes we'll complete the balance of the eight remaining scales. We've done four of the twelve possible scales in this tutorial. I think that's plenty of work for you to get on top of. But what I am going to do is I'm going to end the tutorial by providing you with a professional backing track. So this is a live band, electric piano, acoustic drums, electric bass and electric guitar. And the band is going to play two bars at 70 beats per minute for each of the four scales that we've just learned. So the band in your key on the E flat instruments will be playing two bars of a C chord, two bars of G, two bars of D, two bars of A and then the band will repeat all of that and it will end on how we started which was C major. I'll put the notes up on the screen as the band plays and I strongly recommend you use this backing track to perfect not only the speed that you need to play the scales at and the band will be playing at 70 beats a minute but remember your target goal is to play your scales as quavers, as half beat notes at 70 beats a minute. The beauty of using backing tracks is twofold. One is the band can't hear you playing, but you can hear them. So if you make a mistake, don't feel embarrassed about it. You're in your practice environment. Just keep working on it till you can keep up with the band, of the speed of the band. So having a running partner, the backing track to keep you honest as far as your ability to play in time at the required speed is a fantastic benefit of using the backing track. The other real benefit is tuning. I'll just finish on one other task that you can use with this backing track and that is once you get comfortable playing the scales at 70 beats a minute as quavers you can practice altering the rhythm with which you play against the band. So instead of playing your C scale just strictly as quavers, like this, you can experiment with alternate rhythms, like this. As long as you don't overstay the two bar per chord welcome with the backing band, you're free to experiment with the rhythm and the, the way in which you play the notes of those scales, limited only by your own creativity. So enjoy the backing track. I hope this has been of interest and use to you. And keep your eye out for volumes two and three in this series, where we'll complete the cycle of fifths. Bye for now. Thank you.